Hello there guys, so today's challenge is a Nakamichi CR3E, which is a three head, discrete head cassette deck, really decent quality, usual Nakamichi refinements. This one has been serviced by me, and what came out in the wash after the servicing, and honestly after it went to the guy that bought it because I didn't pick it up, so I'll, I'll admit to that one is, it would record for about 40 seconds, absolutely fine and then after a while for no reason whatsoever the record function would just stop working so there was no erase there was no record it was very intermittent honestly the last week or so i've been chasing my tail with this it's been a bit of a nightmare and i managed to pin it down to the bias circuit so the bias circuit if i can get it to focus down here this silver thing here is what's known as L301 on the schematics. This is the bias oscillator. And then you've got your pots down there for your biasing of your different switches on the front by tape type EXSX and ZX. That's where you adjust the pots for doing electrical adjustments. Now, I'd already checked all that. However, I would not generally, as part of a service, go through and start checking the oscillator because it is a very complicated little circuit. This L301 thing in here is a little module inside that metal box and inside that module is a capacitor which could fail and then you've also got the oscillator. Now, the testing from the Nakamichi service manual, this isn't, with it being Nakamichi it's not simple. Usually if an erase head wasn't working I would put it in record and then I would simply put my probes and my multimeter onto the erase head, have I got a voltage, yes or no. No, I'd replace the head. This one, the service manual, and, and you can just see it in there. So this resistor that I've got in there, this little plug it's plugged into is the plug for the erase head. And what you have to do is put a 0.1 ohms resistor across the head wires, almost to simulate the head doing its thing, I suppose. And then you have to get a frequency counter, which is like a multimeter, but it tests in hertz. And depending on what the hertz gives out from either side of this resistor depends on whether you either need to adjust your oscillator which you can just see is like that dark gray thing inside there you can also adjust these little blue resistors down here these resistors you can bridge them with that black bridge underneath there and that will give you different milliamps to the oscillator which will then provide the hertz to the erase head and go through and erase your tape and generally if your tape's getting erased it's also getting recorded onto and that generally solves all your problems now the issue i've had with this one is i went through all the bias circuit checked all the capacitors i've changed the two caps in the bias circuit because they're known to be terrible they were out of spec they got changed and tested the voltage across these two dark blue resistors if we can just move these wires out of the way these two kind of grey blue RAF coloured resistors um, the, the power comes this way all the way along here and then this final connector here on the end of I believe it is R345 this should supply like 11.4 volts into this oscillator this does its business and sends the signal to the erase head and off now what's happening is the voltage is going in it's going into this L301 and no hertz is coming out of this side, so something in here isn't working. So we're going to have to remove this L301. There is absolutely no chance of replacing the oscillator. There's no chance of getting L301. This is a, a, quite a rare part. It seems to go wrong quite a few times. Also because it's a separate item, this silver bit here, it hasn't got any real schematics on the service diagrams. There's a little bit that points towards it, but it's not very as detailed as what the rest of it would be. So my plan is today is I'm going to whoop this off. I'm going to inspect what's inside it, change the cap, see if that solves anything. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to be looking towards the oscillator. I have seen a post on Google of somebody who had the almost exact same issue and uh, the oscillator is basically a, a coil that's that's basically what it is an adjustable coil and you, you can turn the, the center of it to adjust it these are very 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 fine coil wires as you can usually find in coiled up components of a cassette deck so his had corroded underneath and led to broken wires which led to no hertz exactly the same thing so i'm hoping that's not the the issue because it's going to take some extremely fine soldering skills if that's the case. 
or it could be that I just can't repair it and the only way to replace it is going to be getting another deck which I actually had in a workshop recently and gave to a friend because he had an issue with something else so the parts deck that I did have sods law I now don't have so it's really really frustrating it's been a difficult one but let's go testing now done I believe I need to pull that L301 have a look at the oscillator and see what we go from there so here is L301 removed, the metal shroud is also removed and you can see the big black bit there is the oscillator that I'm going to pull and inspect. It's already been desoldered so let's have a look under the microscope. So here we are, this is a direct feed from my digital microscope. This is a needle I'm using, that's how small we're at and as you can see this mm -hmm. wire here is connected to the post and we have three wires that have come off due to corrosion. Now this is all fully cleaned. Just forgive my uh, focus in there, this is very very difficult on a microscope but this is fully cleaned and the green there as you can see just at the end of my needle now is where this copper has completely come off and become corroded. So that connector to the post, the large silver bit there, it has completely come off. I have moved those wires out of the way but as you can see all this green here is the corrosion that was from the copper. Now this isn't in the best condition anyway to be honest with you this is all kind of sealed in with horrible glue from about 40 years ago but at the same time it's obviously showing us that we need to do some serious work here and I need to reconnect these wires now as I say this thing I'm using as a pointing stick is a standard needle you'd use to sew clothes up so that's the kind of scale we're looking at and that's the kind of size so this is not going to be a fun challenge but it's going to be a challenge nonetheless so i'm going to put some wires around this post here and then i'm going to try and bridge that connection all the way down to this wire which goes down into the coil and is loose it needs to go clean with some flux and it should look like this one fully stuck together and working so let's go so i've started the repair and what i've done is i've ended up getting one strand of wire i can't explain how small this is this is particularly small one strand of wire my plan is to wrap it around each of the the large silver posts and solder it in place and then i can kind of droop it down to where the broken wires are flux everything clean everything and make that connection so they can see those two posts i've made the solder for my new wires i'm going to droop them down and then solder them under the microscope and that's here's the first one that I've done which was a success after a lot of cleaning, a lot of flux. As you can see the wire on the left goes into it and the top wire was my new one. And here is the finished product. Now hopefully my camera shows the details but I've ended up replacing three wires. Uh, they're soldered on the posts and soldered into the coil. So now that's done, all that's left to do is to rebuild this L301. And this circuit board now just pops into that shroud. And there's two kind of tabs that retain it in place. It's not easy to get out, I'll be honest with you. But you have to be very, very gentle, obviously. And once that pops into place, then you also have a, an insulator, which just protects those contacts from the rest of your board, which is obviously very important to have in place. So once you've rebuilt it, then it's time to refit that back into its home onto the main board on the deck and it you, with it with it having one two three four five pins you obviously have to make sure these are aligned first before you seat it and before you push it home and then once that's in place i'll probably put uh, a couple of bits of solder on just to retain it in place and then we'll turn it upside down and fully floor all the posts so these are rather finicky should we say i also don't want to overheat those pins because if i overheat the pins it could reflow the solder that i've done on the actual oscillator so this is <laughs> quite touchy stuff and you're not going to find out if it works or doesn't work until you get it fully refitted and then you know if it doesn't work you're back to square one you've got to desolder it remove it remove the shroud which i have actually done i think this is the third time i've had this in and out due to the fact that I wanted to find out if the cap inside that module was my issue. It was out of spec, I did change it, didn't do anything. I changed something else in there, I think it was a transistor, again in hope that it wasn't the oscillator, but it turned out to be the oscillator. So now that's all done and soldered, let's give it a test. Right, now this is all reinstalled and done, here's the big test. 
I've got a tape in there and it does have something on it. So if I press play, you'll notice that we have some music. So if I press stop, the test is going to be is I've got no nothing fed into it, no input. The volume's all the way down on the record level. If I select the tape, then I should be able to listen while it's recording. And if it's working, this will show nothing. If it's not working, this will still show the music. So put it in record mode, press play. And it's recording. There you go. It's blank in the tape. So we have fixed our issue. Thankfully, that was an absolute mammoth task. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and check the hertz of the recording head as per the service manual. Double check that, adjust as necessary, and then this one is going to go back to the client all 100% sorted and correct. It's, I wanted to video document this one because it's been such an unusual issue and such an unusual thing to happen even somebody i was talking to somebody on facebook about it on a nakamichi group and even that person was like i've never seen a bios oscillator do that before please can you send me some pictures so here we are i've documented it if you have this deck with this transport and that is your issue then l301 the oscillator is something that you need to check as a last resort so now this beautiful little nakamichi can go back to its owner ready to do some recordings i am going to do a hell of a lot of testing with this in the next couple of days to make sure it is 100 percent recording correctly and as the quality expected from an akamichi but if you've enjoyed this quick video guys if you've got one of these decks great this is obviously not a cheap item not a cheap cassette deck and it requires the best possible attention when fixing defects so this is going to go back to the guy that owns it and on to the next one I've had a bit of a break there, a couple of weeks actually, usually, I usually kind of do one a week, but I've had a good three weeks, and I've got some nice decks coming up, so hopefully we will be successful with our testing, and onwards and upwards. Peace!